the congregation said? Amen. Amen. Wow. Wait, waited 47 years to hide your talent. I loved it. There's something about a cappello, amen, that you hear the words even better. I don't know about you, but I heard beautiful. Thank you. <clears throat> thank you. Thank you. Um, let's hope I can finish off this high Sabbath, amen. Has everybody got a blessing today? Started in Sabbath school, and I learned quite a bit. Thank you, Arden, for that. But, um, you know, you see me with, uh, sorry, I'm going to talk a lot leaving the mic, sorry. <laughs> you see me with a few books up here. This is called a mega book bag. And uh, I thought... A little unconventional, but I'd show you all about publishing for a couple minutes. Do you mind? Have you seen our beautiful books? Children's Century Classic, Bible, Bible Stories by Arthur Maxwell, been around 60 years. These came out about seven years ago, 270 stories. What the difference is, as I tell folks, the Bible never changed, but the generations did. The stories are a little shorter. They're scripturally referenced, and they also reference our Spirit of Prophecy books, Patriarchs and Prophets, Desire of Ages, Great Controversy. At the end of every story, there's a QR code. You scan it, and it reads a story with sound effects. We've got games and puzzles relating to 270 stories. Anyway, just a little promo for our career LEs. And um, you've seen me. You've seen me up a couple times here before, so you know about our health books, right? We have a health message. Well, we've got them in books, hardback, called Encyclopedia of Foods and Their Healing Power, three volumes. Been out for 20 years. Anyway, they deal with 180 diseases, 700 foods. People say, oh, I got the Internet. Well, you know what I tell them? I say, you know, the Internet will tell you coffee's good for you this week. Next week it'll tell you it's bad for you. Wine's good for you this week. Wine's bad for you next week. What these do, they don't have an agenda. They tell you the facts. You make the hard decision of making the choices that are better for your health. Amen? I'm not done. But anyway, my Bible friends, you've seen that. And then I'm going to get into our summer program. If you know anybody 16 years or older and wants to do a ministry and have a life changing summer job it's called the mega book ministry and these are some of the books that we train them they come around for they come with us for 10 straight weeks we're going to be in raleigh and charlotte from may 24th to august 17th these are our health books fighting disease ministry of healing health and peace of course i could go on and on about our our mega books oh i wanted to leave you i wanted to show you one more thing uh, two more things Amazing Nature, we've got um, dinosaurs, migration, and insects, and it all points back to creation. Not one of these talks about evolution, and let me tell you something, we're all like, yeah, 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 we know, but out in the world, they love these books, they eat them up, and they're like, thank you for having a book that doesn't point to some lie. And then, of course, we have our drop-downs. You know about these books? Show you my favorite, Desire of Ages. Two crowns, says the crown we deserved versus the crown that he gave us. And then, of course, the great controversy. Revelation Daniel. I'll tell you an experience about this real quick. I love giving that book out. Are we living in those days? Amen. We heard that in Sabbath school if you were here. <laughs> we're definitely living in those days. And then, of course, you notice everything's in Spanish and English. We have a big, large population of who we reach uh, daily and weekly, yearly, of our Spanish community. Hope and happiness, steps to Christ. Have you heard what I say about my steps to Christ? Written 100 years ago, over 100 years ago, by a lady who had a third grade education, 
penned over a million words. Second most translated book ever written behind the Bible. Steps to Christ. And we have it, brothers and sisters. How many have bought a hundred of these and passed them out? Or I'm going to challenge you, as I always do. I'm sorry. I've been here for 18 years. Can you believe that? It's getting a little old, my challenges, right? They're about the same. I challenge you to go get Steps to Christ. I challenge you to go get glow tracks. Well, gas is so high, Lance, and, you know, I don't have the extra money. You know what God will do? God will double or triple it if you put it into a ministry of giving out literature. And this is what my sermon's all about. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for this great message. We thank you for this great time we live in. The disciples would have given their right arms to live right when we are living. Right before you're coming back, Jesus, help us. Help us to be connected, to want to share Jesus no matter what the consequences. Guide us now as we open up your word and we learn more of your love and how to share that. In Jesus' name, amen. You know my title, I got a little help with it from a friend of mine, family friend, family member, friend, member, hopefully they're friends in the family, amen. Not all families get along, but anyway, well, we, won't, we won't go there. Um, sorry. Witnessing the gift that keeps on giving. You know, I thought about telling my testimony, but you've heard it over and over. Some of you haven't. You imagine 40 years ago how a divorce, pork-making sausage family would bring someone like me into the, into the truth? But it's facts of how I was brought in by a backslidden Adventist stepmother who I believe accepted the message in her last breath. They both, my father and mother, both died of colon cancer. So you think the health message is not accurate? <laughs> my stepmother witnessed to my father on his deathbed just before she passed before him at like 72 years old. She was about 61 and said, if you sell this business, the pork business, to your sons, I have three older brothers, they will all turn out, they will turn out just like us, just like me and you. My dad turned around to the shock of my oldest brother, and maybe the third oldest, they were business people. I was already in the church, unfortunately, when they died. And my dad asked me, he goes, hey, you ever thought of making turkey sausage? You ever thought about making, you know, others? And that was back in the 80s. So it was unheard of, you know, to make turkey sausage. My dad had that thought to keep it going. Anyway, he sold the business. Because I believe in my heart that he accepted the health message. And my stepmother. And they gave it away. You know, it, you know, I could tell you stories about making, but anyway, enough about that. But Witnessing the gift that keeps on giving. They witnessed to me. And here I am 40 years later. Amen. How many of you have witnessed and see your converts or people making a change around your circle? And now we're going to share with you a couple scriptures. I will jump pretty quick, but we're going to turn to Matthew chapter 7, verses 9 to 12. Matthew 7, 9 to 12. And it says, Jesus says, Or what man is there among you who, if a son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, he will give him a serpent? If you then, being evil, pointing to me and all of us, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more does your Father who is, heaven, who is in heaven, excuse me, who is in heaven give good things to those who ask him? Do you believe that scripture? Do you believe he gives good things? Amen. You know, I tell literature evangelists all the time when we struggle, literature evangelist work is like this. We're not bipolar, but we're up and down, the trials, the tests, and all that. And when they're down in the valley going through a test, I said, remember, God knows you're here. God, your bread and water are sure. And it goes on to say in verse 12, Therefore, 
Whatever you want men to do to you, do also to them, for this is the law and the prophets. So I go back to my title. I don't want, let me say this, I don't want anybody in my circle when probation closes to come up to me and say, why didn't you tell me? And you know, I'm not going to tell them face to face, per se. I'm not a Bible worker. There may be Bible workers out here, amen. But guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to tell them all about this little lady who wrote this book. And if it's someone I'm going to see again, I'm going to start with this book. And forgive me, you might laugh. If I'm never going to see him again, I'm going to give him this book, Steps to Christ, and this book, Revelation and Daniel. Because they will know the truth. It will be between them and the Holy Spirit to accept what this is. Let me share you a quick experience. You want to hear experiences? You're going to hear them. Oh, I'm sorry. I asked a question. But here they is. Why I go to church on Saturday? It's not a glow track I carry all the time, but I was sitting in my dentist chair, and I was all done with the cleaning, and I, uh, I reach in my pocket, and what pops out? And I've been going to him for years, five, six years. I've given him a gift for you. Am I good enough? The health message, eight simple steps. Well, this one came out of my pocket, and I thought to myself, do I want to give him this? And I apologize for sharing with you what went through my thoughts. Because he might, you know, next time he drills for that cavity, he may go just a little farther if he reads this and doesn't accept the change of the Sabbath. And I thought to myself, eh. So I put it back in my pocket. And of course, of course, I listened to the Holy Spirit. And then I pulled it back out, and I pulled two of them. And I said, here's one for his assistant. And I said, give this to the dentist. Well, I've seen him once, I think, since I gave that to him. And we're, you know, like all dentists, all doctors, really people, 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 skills. And he hasn't talked to me about it yet. Point is, he may never talk to me about it. Amen? But he knows the truth now. Amen? He knows from that little scripture, well, Lance, you know, I'm going to jump to something else. I don't want to carry those books. They're too big in my purse. You know, I've heard this for 37 years. I don't know how long glow tracks have been out. I've heard this for 30 years. Well, guess what? God gave you an answer to those who say, ah, the steps to Christ won't fit in my purse, won't fit in my, you know, my car. i got to carry it. It'll fit right here in your, your pocket for you men who have a shirt pocket. We have little plastic carriers. You can put them in your pocket. And God will impress you, amen, to pass out that literature when you're walking in your daily walk, amen. All right, let's go back to Romans or not back to, let's go to Romans chapter 12. I hope no one's uh, getting distracted already. No, Romans 12, <laughs> verses 3 to 8. It says, For I say through grace given to me, to everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he thought he ought to think, but to think soberly as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. So I guess my point is, you know, do we feel like that person is worth giving the truth to? You know, I already said it. You know, I don't want anybody to say, why didn't you tell me? I remember I was at a ball game, baseball game, for my 50th birthday. Oh, only two years ago, Mark. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> my 50th birthday. My girls, you know, they're busy with their lives. And I just kind of sent a text or an email. I said, guess what dad is doing for his birthday? I'm going to a Cleveland Indians baseball game. If you want to come, join me. Anyway, they all got together. And that started my little 50th birthday. As we're walking to the stadium on that Sunday uh, afternoon, um, I had glow tracks on me. You know, my Indian shirt, my hat. All of a sudden... Homeless person comes up and asks for money from somebody else. So <clears throat> I leave my group. I said, I'll see you up there. And I walk over. And uh, I had glow tracks. And I forget which one I gave to them. But uh, anyway, I gave it to the gentleman. I said, I'm sorry, I don't have any money to give. Or I might have given him a couple dollars. I forget what it was. Um, that was a few years ago when I was 50. 
But anyway, the uh, uh, the man said to me as I gave him a glow track, told him about, you know, it's all about Jesus. Jesus loves you. He said to me, are you a Seventh-day Adventist? This is a homeless person on the streets of Cleveland. And he asked me, he looked pretty haggard, pretty rough. And I said, yes, I am. He goes, oh, you know. Uh, and then he got into something that, you know, was a little, you could tell he was confused in his mind. And he started talking about his mother not loving him. Just a spur of the moment, homeless person started telling me about his mother. Went on. She hated me and, you know, wanted me out of the house. And so we never know what the baggage or the background of someone's life is. You know, and forgive me, I've judged people. You know, what are you doing there begging, you know? And he went on. And, of course, the Holy Spirit impressed me to say to him, well, you know, I know someone who loves you unconditional. And I pointed up and I said, the Father in heaven. I said, he loves you so much. Anyway, you know, what comes of that? You know, and I left. I had prayer with him. And I guess my daughter was watching. And we got up to the ticket stand and, and uh, my... Um, my one daughter said, man, Dad, I wish I could do what you do. And I said, well, you know, just start passing out literature and you'll have those experiences. Because I am no better. What's the scripture say here? Think myself any better? I tell these experiences to encourage you that we are called to do one thing. It says, think, not to think himself more highly than he ought to think but to think soberly as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. We all have faith, amen? I don't know what your gift is. I say we're going to cover gifts in a minute unless I run out of time. Oh, time's already up. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Pastor Scotty has, has taught us well, amen? Pastor Scotty has got us all trained really well. We love Pastor Scotty, and I love his messages. Um, let's jump back over here to... Romans 12, 1, it says, I beseech you, isn't that an amazing word? I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. I have a whole paragraph to read about that sacrifice that was presented to God as, as the representation of Jesus. It says it can't have any spot or blemish. It has to be a perfect lamb. And then it goes on the last part of the paragraph. It says, we are to give ourselves to the service of God. And we should seek to make the offering as nearly perfect as possible. God will not be pleased with anything less than the best we can offer. Those who love him with all their heart will desire to give him the best service of the life. And they will be constantly seeking to bring every power of their being into harmony with the laws that will promote their ability to do his will. Amen? And I know we're all doing that. We're all trying that. But I guess my theme of this message is the gift that keeps on giving, and you've heard it for 18 years, just include literature in everything you do. That's all I encourage you to try to get the courage as you open up that door, as you help that person pick up the things they dropped, hey, by the way, I do a little ministry. Let me give you a glow track. You know, it'll stay with them. Who knows if they know Jesus or if they don't. Me personally, I, I'm not really there to find out if they're a Christian or not. I'm just there to say, hey, I got something about Jesus. And a lot of times they are. And sometimes they aren't, and they don't say much. But um, let me read... Um, let me read the explanation of our scripture reading today. Um, my call porter ministry. And uh, it says on page um, seven, the explanation of that other angel. Do you believe that other angel is out there now? Well, let me hear, let me explain who that other angel is. It says... Um, the work, oh, sorry. Uh -oh. It says that other angel, oh, I can't find it. If there is one work more important than another, is that getting our publications before the public? Here it is. I lost my place, sorry. <laughs> it says, in a large degree, through our publishing houses, 
It doesn't say completely, but it says in a large degree through our publishing houses to be accomplished the work of that 18-1, that other angel who comes down from heaven with great power and who lightens the earth with his glory. So he comes down. What is that? What is coming down? What do you think that is? That's the latter rain. Do you believe the latter rain is falling? Do you think the shaking is going on? It is. You're either going to be shaken in or you're going to be shaken out. And you know what? I've been told for 40 years all kinds of times why I'm not a Christian. And you know what I got to share with them? I'm so thankful I believe in justification. I'm so thankful I believe in sanctification. Amen? Isn't that a wonderful message? The world does not know our truths about our Jesus. Amen? They think it's cheap grace. They think it's once saved, always saved. They think they can't fall away. You know, I'm just so thankful that I can answer whoever is in my circle that Jesus loves me. And when I ask for forgiveness that evening, I can stand the next day and witness for Jesus. Amen? Isn't that a wonderful thought? Wow. I'm just so thankful Jesus loves me just the way I am. And he loves you just the way you are. Amen? And each of us has a work to do. Um, you know, I, I wanted to compare gifts, you know, of the world and the gifts of, you know, our, our calling. You know, those gifts are great. Flowers and rings and diamonds and uh, gift cards. You know, and they're, they're part of a ministry. But you know what? The greatest gift, and you know I've got two greatest gifts, so I'm going to use the greatest gift twice, and um, is... And you know where I'm going with this, but uh, I want to read it to you so I can read it exactly um, in 1 Corinthians 13, the greatest gift. It even says it, the greatest gift. I'm not going to read the whole chapter, but may I go down to the end? It says, now I see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. I know in part, but then I shall know just as I am known. Now abide faith, hope, love, these three. But the greatest of these is love. And that's why you serve him. That's why you're at church today. That's why you're going to go out and get some glow tracks after you Monday or, or Sunday or Monday, right? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but you're, you love him, so you want to share what he has done for you with everybody you meet. Amen? Isn't that what, you know, that's what being a Christian is? I want to share every, everyone that, hey, you have a chance. Don't worry. This world is going to end. Everything is going to burn. Um, I wanted to um, share with you my experience in the um, Walmart parking lot. I, uh, I was approached by uh, a man giving out a very good tracks, and I'm sure he was asking for money. But, you know, unfortunately, um, we all deal with plastic today. So the young man came up. He was young, you know, and he gave me the brochure and said it was a hope, um, something for homeless, whatever. And anyway, I listened, and I said, hey, I'm sorry. I don't have any money to give, but I do have something I can give you. So I had my car, and I walked over my car, and the first thing I gave him was this. And guess what I said? No, I won't repeat myself again. I said the exact thing I just said. I said, be sure and read it. He took it. And then I didn't have my other book with me. And I said, wait, I got another book for you. And I went and got The Great Controversy. And what I do with The Great Controversy is I do this. I better get my glasses on. That's what I told him, too. <laughs> I said, uh, it covers Revelation, Daniel, puts it in order. All the prophecies, most of it's been fulfilled. There's only one prophecy to be fulfilled, excuse me, be fulfilled yet. And you know what that one prophecy has to be? The second coming of our Savior, Jesus. That's it. Jesus is coming. All the other prophecies have been fulfilled. And I said, it's all down here. And then I go in here and I said, let me show you a couple title headings. The first great deception. They don't know what that is. Can the dead speak to us? I said, that's an interesting topic. And I do just like this. I said, here's my favorite chapter show. And I usually turn to this because people are in a hurry. I turn to this chapter in this book every time. And they shake their heads, yes. Liberty of conscience threatened. 
I said, it's, it's obvious. There's people that don't even know God know that our freedoms are disappearing in this country. And where's the image of the beast start? Right here. And then I said, it goes right down to the only safeguard, right down to the second coming of our Savior, Jesus. Anyway, he took it. I gave it to him. I said, be sure and read it. And uh, we were about to part. And, and, and as I was talking about, I started talking about some truths. You know, I started talking about the Sabbath. I think I gave him a track on the Sabbath. And then uh, I kind of looked up. And there in the cars were people kind of like attentive. You know, they were like listening to me. And I was like, I don't mean to talk loud. You know, I just got, you know, bad ears, you know, hard of hearing. <laughs> but anyway, um, people were listening. And I hope they heard the right thing. And then when I got all done with the gentleman, I forget his name, uh, Lanny or Lan, Laney, um, I said, hey, let's have a word of prayer. And I probably spent 20 minutes with him. You usually don't have that much time. But he listened to me for 20 minutes. And I said, let's pray. I had a prayer and I left. You know, the gift that keeps on giving, brothers and sisters, we don't always get to see the results. But I have a hope and I have assurance that my efforts and the Holy Spirit watering those seeds that are planted, they will come back tenfold. Amen? Do you believe that? And that's my hope. Well, there's no baptisms in my story. Well, you know, that's why I encourage you. I mean, if you want to give Bible studies, great. I believe there is a reaping. But, you know, I like to give out literature. Let the Holy Spirit do the rest. And um, let me read here in Desire of Ages. Uh, I do a lot of reading. Uh, in page 520 and 521, it says, um, In the commission to his disciples, Christ not only outlined their work, but gave them their message. Teach the people, he said, to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. The disciples were to teach what Christ had taught. Amen? You're doing that. Believe me, even if you don't say a word, you're doing that by going to church today, by being a good Christian follower. That which he had spoken not only in person, but through the prophets and the teachers of the Old Testament is here included. Human teaching is shut out. There is no place for tradition, for man's theories and conclusions, or for church legislation. No, law, no laws ordained by ecclesiastical authority are included in the commission. None of these are Christ's servants to teach. The law and the prophets, with the record of his own words and deeds, are the treasure committed to the disciples to be given to the world. Christ's name is their watchword, their badge of the dis distinction, their bond of union, the authority for their course of action, and the source of their success. Nothing that does not bear his superscription is to be recognized in his kingdom. Is that not beautiful? I encourage you all. Include literature as you go uh, through your life. I started to say door to door. I'm sorry. I know you don't go door to door. <laughs> um, I wanted to share with you some statistics. Do you mind if I share that with you real quick? It says the membership in over 200 countries. Our books are translated into about 140 languages. Somebody told me a radio broadcast was translated into 400 languages and now they're trying to get I think there's 500 I heard on that 500 languages in the world it says there are 18 million members worldwide Seventh Day Adventists 1.2 million in North America and the Carolina Conference has 24,391 guess what the population of North and South Carolina is 15 and a half million people that's about one 0.5% of population are Seventh-day Adventists. Is there work to do, I guess, is my point, given those stats? Do you think there's still people to see? There is. There is. I know there's a lot of Adventists. That is a lot. But it's not enough, amen? And I believe Jesus wants us to do this. Let me read, um, if you don't mind me uh, doing uh, the mother of all teachers, repetition. Let me read our three angels' message. And then a couple other scriptures real quick. It says in Revelation 14, 6 to 12, Then I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach to those on the earth, to every nation, tribe, tongue, and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to him, for the hour 
of his judgment has come, and the worship him who made heaven and earth, the sea and the springs of water. And we know that happened in 1844, amen? And another angel f- followed, and, um, sorry, another angel followed, saying, Babylon has fallen, has fallen, that great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. We know there's a lot of confusion out there, Amen. Then a third angel followed, saying with a loud voice, If anyone worship the beast in his image, receives his mark on his forehead and on his hand. And I read this last time I had the sermon. Listen to what happens. He himself shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out full strength into the cup of his indignation. He shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of holy angels and the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascends forever and ever. They have no rest day or night who worship the beast in his image, whoever receives the mark of his name. It's a serious, serious time we live in, brothers and sisters. You know, all kidding aside, what a responsibility we have as truth bearers, amen? And then the joy, here is the patience of the saints. Here are those who keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. I hope I'm not discouraging you. I hope I'm lifting you up. But you know, the facts are we have the most information ever given to mankind in the Seventh Adventist Church. And then let me read uh, Revelation 1-3, and you all probably have this memorized, but it says, Blessed is he who reads and those who hear the words of this prophecy. Keep those things which are written in it, for the time is near. And then I'll do the Great Commission, and then I'll give you the greatest gift ever given. Matthew 28 says, 16 to 20, then the Concord Seventh day Adventist Church went away into the Count Concord to the mountain which Jesus had appointed them. When they saw him, they worshiped him, and some doubted. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I've commanded you, and lo, I'm with you always till the end of the age. Amen. And then we're going to go back to Revelation 18.1 and read what a, what a blessing we have to have spirit of prophecy to know this. There are people that won't even open up the book of Revelation. You've heard that? You know that? They won't touch it. No, no, no. (laughs) It's too confusing. It's not to be read. And they're all about the gospel, which is fine about the gospel, but it's not fine about not knowing the last day events. And after these things, I saw another angel coming down from heaven, having great authority, great authority, and the earth was illuminated with his glory. And then, of course, a scripture that has been used a lot and maybe isn't as precious to most as they hear it, but the greatest gift, and this is our gift to give, brothers and sisters, is John 3.16, and I know you know it, but it says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. May God bless us as we present Jesus in such a beautiful way that it attracts people into this wonderful message. Thank you, and God bless. Amen.